and thank you to everyone who has stuck around. Um, this is the uh, virtual folk fest as part of the Brandeis Leonard Bernstein Festival of the Creative Arts. Cool, so our first artist is Rosa Tu. Uh, singer songwriter Rosa Tu's introspective music is best enjoyed on rainy days in the comfort of your own solitude. A fan of folk tales, poetry, and gazing out the window, she writes from the most unconscious parts of herself, finding mostly melancholy ballads of love, suffering, and growth. She's represented by a Berlin-based label studio collective, the famous Gold Watch, and her latest album, Drink All the Wine, is available on Spotify.
So drink all the wine and listen well, please. You will be fine. You are a window. Hello! Oh, thank you. My dog is clapping for me um, <laughs> with his eyes. And uh, I am Rosa too, as Adina and Nicole nicely pointed out. And I'm very grateful to be here. It's my first uh, digital show ever. And it is a uh, my first live show since 2019. Oh cute little happy face in the chat um and yeah i'm just so grateful to be here to be alive um this next song is new i wrote it when i was very sick january 2020 don't know what i had um, but i couldn't get out of bed for several days and i was listening to the air conditioner or the heater i guess and it was humming this monotone started writing a song with it and it was kind of a song of um, willing your spirit back into your body which I feel like probably everyone can identify with after these last months and years. It's called The Lowing Song. Come back to 
back to me I don't know what you're doing. What are you doing today, everyone? Is everyone in their pajamas? Is everyone in the bathtub? Together? The giant, big giant bathtub? That would be great. Imagine being in a giant bathtub with like millions of other people, but it was big enough for everyone. Dina is from Brooklyn, and I'm in Brooklyn, but I'm from Massachusetts, and Adina is in Massachusetts, which is awesome. This is the only change in tuning. I think I'm going to do a song about kind of New York. It is true. Thank you for chatting that. This is a song about how New York is much better than Paris. Much, much better. It's called What's in Paris. I'd like to show you the leaves fall And pick you apples so red Wine and architecture 
just didn't see the only difference is there's no me in Paris. But if you come to New York, here I am. Um, yeah, that's a song is a true story. As anyone from Paris will tell you. sighs it's because my dog Tito is sighing um because he's tired and he he likes music he's like ah, music this song um I, my second song the lowing song as you may know as I told you <laughs> two songs ago is was a song about being sick this is also a song about being sick and it comes from a time when I was very sick I had salmonella and I was in Mexico City and I was very far from home at that point and I was scared and it was very comforting to me. Tito, stop, stop licking. No licking. I, you can't hear it, but I can. It's annoying me. Um, yeah, and, and music is about comforting ourselves and comforting babies with lullabies and celebrating weddings and morning funerals and it frustrates me that we live in the modern world where music is 
belongs to musicians or something like that, and no one should believe that. This is called Salmonella. I don't recommend trying it just because for me it was quite painful. I see a chat. Oh yeah, New York is definitely better than Paris. True, always true. Um, okay. This is a song that is, that Sophie is gonna learn on the accordion and hopefully we're gonna make a great music video of it. I wrote this a while ago, it's called Queen of Medicine.
So that song is about, you know, starting out a relationship as equals and then kind of becoming the one that is worshipped and not being seen as an authentic, complex being with all these different, you know, ups and downs and taking care and needing to be taken care of um, and really only being seen by someone else as on this pedestal. And this song which no one has heard before except for you, is um, about being on the opposite side and coming out of that place. And I don't know about it, any of you, but if you have ever really kind of like worshipped someone and idealized them and followed them somewhere and really believed and then somehow the gauze was taken from your eyes and you realized that was kind of too much and it, it wasn't real. Um, this, that's what this song is about. This song is for you. It's called Post Parting, but I'm not sure I love it. And if anyone has other suggestions, you may chat them to me or email me, rosa2music at gmail.com. so close to all the secrets of life I wanted you so much to go deeper that night take your happiness all your suffering
strings here, by the way. Um, this song is a request from Abinav. Thank you. Thank you, Adina. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm very happy. Happy Folk Fest. Brandeis, there's a lot of great artists coming up in the next few days. And thank you so much to, I always want to say too cool for instruments, but too cheap for instruments, I believe is your um, acapella name. And shout out to acapella. I went to Oberlin and I was in the acapellicans. And that's also fun. Acapella is so fun. Okay. Yeah, this is for a bit of... <laughs>
All of the creatures come bless this place, fill it with love. Wow, this has gone by so quickly. It's so strange to be not playing for so many real people. So I timed this, but I'm not sure when I started timing, but it says 40 minutes have gone by. So I was thinking I would play one more song. Or two more songs? Mmm. You always want to leave them wanting more. So let's play one more song. Um, and this song is actually an original melody, but it is a Dylan Thomas poem set to music. Do not go gentle into that good night. And I thought it could be good to end with this song because too cheap for instruments. Would you like to do a Q&A after? Yeah, totally. I love Q&As. I've never done a Q&A though. Cool, 20 peeps. Yeah, I'm down. If anyone has any questions, I would definitely do a Q&A. Um, but anyway, do not go gentle. You can all look it up online right now and we can sing together. And what I'm gonna do, cause we're all singers and we love harmony, you want to sing because this is recorded and you can listen to it again you can learn all of the parts so i'm going to sing first two verses of melody two verses after that the high part the verse after that the low part and then we go back to the melody so eventually we'll all be able to sing it together i hope that's my dream so do not go gentle to that good night dylan thomas poem
eyes could blaze like me Absolutely incredible. I'm just blown away. Um, we have one question here from Nicole. Um, she asks, what is your process for writing these absolutely gorgeous songs? Oh, songwriting process. Um, I always start with music. Often the music comes from as I sort of mentioned, when I'm very sick or when I've just woken up from a dream and I'm in that state of mind where you're not really f fully present in reality, you're also like in the dream space. And oftentimes when I'm there not thinking too much, like I'll sort of catch on to melodies and then I'll work on lyrics for quite a long time, um, like years sometimes and sometimes not as long, but usually a long time. Nicole, do you want to read the next question? Yeah, I'll read the next one. Uh, so the next question is from Sarah, who says, who are your favorite artists and what music inspires you? Oh, that's a good question. Who are my favorite artists? Sarah, uh, can I ask Sarah a question? Do you mean musical artists or like painters or I, I, I guess my inspiration for music as probably everyone's inspiration for everything comes from the world and all of my experiences. Um, I really like Egon Schiel, Schiele, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, the, the painter, um, Frida Kahlo, um, musicians, I really love Ravi Shankar. I always loved Bell and Sebastian for their like storytelling abilities as well so many people places like i i often as well like i catch on to just like individual songs that i heard someone humming in a foreign country when i was traveling and i like some of those songs are still like they replay in my head i guess like moments in my life where i have been really significant and filled with emotion and i have also been like maybe in transition or filled with hormones or for whatever reason, like felt significant. I feel like those, whatever art was around me at the time, I like pulled, pulled from that. That was the question, right? Yeah, I don't know which one uh, she meant of um, what kind of artist, but that like completely makes sense of just taking inspiration from everything and just listening to you, I could really hear how much of other artists and things that you see in the world have like affected and influenced your art, which is how great art is made. So that's awesome. Yeah, actually I see that uh, Sarah uh, put in the chat, a uh, musical artist, but if you enjoy any painters, I would love to hear that too. But I think you kind of answered that like perfectly. Yeah, I think when we were little too, our mom, our uncle, my uncle Carter used to listen to a lot of Joni Mitchell and, uh, you know, there was like Bob Dylan around, Leonard Cohen, like this sort of 
when I started, like the first songs that I learned, I think were Joni Mitchell songs, Beatles songs, and those, they're very lyrical. Um, so I think some of my music, cause that's when I started writing music and that was the form that I knew. So that's where my music started, I guess. I love every artist you've named, that's awesome. Um, Sophie would like to know, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, that's a very good question. Well, Sophie, I have to say that you really can't ask that question except if you want a different answer. Every time I go to the ice cream shop, Ample Hills down the street, because like sometimes it's like, pretzel chocolate sometimes it's like vanilla sometimes it's pistachio so my favorite thing about ice cream eating is that you can try a different flavor and you can often just get samples and you get like 12 of them so i cannot say that i i can say i have a favorite but it's only on the day that i want an ice cream so today it would be pistachio 100 percent Um, the next question is from Roseanne, and she says, what are your favorite songs that you've written and why? Roseanne. Um, uh, one of my favorite songs is, uh, there's a song I wrote called When I Die, which was, and we recorded it as a collaboration with this Irish singer-songwriter in Berlin, and... I like it because it's a piano song and I like it because it it was one of those things that happened really, really instantaneously where it was kind of like, you know, how artists sometimes say like, I'm not really making anything. I'm just the messenger through which things are coming. And I think with that song, I felt like I was really just like the messenger through which the song and the feeling was being expressed. And I also like the song that I wrote a while ago called the Good Morning Love Song because my mom loves it, and I love my mom. Beautiful. I have a question. Um, I don't think there are more at the moment. Um, I'm wondering if your songwriting has changed over the course of this past year, that we've been in a very strange and new circumstances, and has that had an impact? Mm, definitely. It has, um, it has made me want to write more happy music. I have, I use songwriting often, as I mentioned before, you know, as self-soothing comfort. I started writing songs, you know, my parents were getting divorced. I was 13, I was very emotional. And like, I would write songs about that and it would make me feel better. Um, and I have so many songs and I do think in general, our society shies away from death and, and sadness and all those things. So those are themes in my music. And I feel like it's, it's nice when, you know, you're in a concert and someone's crying and someone's moved and it feels like, okay, you're allowing someone to open up that part of themselves. But after this last year, it was for me personally and people in my life was, was too sad. It was just too sad of a year or too many people passed away. Too many tragedies happened. It was very scary and terrifying. And it made me want to see if there is a part of me that could could flip and and not just bring out, you know, the most sad, terrified parts and express that, but also celebration and joy. And like maybe I could do a whole set of just like, you know, jazzy, jazzy numbers or people just relax. They don't have to think too hard. They don't have to get too open and it's still wonderful. Um, so that's I don't think my music itself has changed, but the idea of trying to write music for um, joy rather than just opening up sadness is, is at the forefront of my mind for sure. That's so wonderfully put. And I think we see a lot throughout history of when times are dark and things aren't going well, that's when you get some of the most bright and happy art of just sometimes you need an escape. Sometimes you need to find the silver linings. And sometimes we need catharsis, but sometimes it becomes just too much of a burden, too heavy. That right. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes you just want to, you know, the writing of the really sad emotional song was enough, and then you don't ever have to share it with anyone, and you can write something that, like, is just relaxing. 
and cheerful. I think that's an excellent note to end unless anyone else has anything else to say, but thank you so much for performing tonight. Your music is beautiful. Everyone should check out Rosa 2 on Spotify. Um, I believe your album is called Drink All the Wine. Is that mm -hmm. right? Drink All um, the Wine. Everyone should check out the latest release, Drink All the Wine. Um, and we would love to one day be able to host you in person because this was just so wonderful. Yeah, and it was great to meet you. Um, just to let everyone know, we will be hosting a different folk artist every single night this week um, until uh, Friday, and then there will be a surprise artist on Saturday yet to be announced. On Thursday night, some of uh, the Two Cheap for Instruments members will be performing our original music. And this is all part of the Brandeis Leonard Bernstein Festival of the Arts. There is art all over campus, um, just visual art. There's dancing, there's music. There's um, a program where artists making gifts and giving them out for free in exchange to other students. It's just an incredible festival. So everyone should make sure to check out everything that's available on campus and tune in for the rest of the week for Folk Fest. Yeah. And thank you everyone for tuning in tonight and bearing with us for the technical. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Thank you guys. All right, good night. Good night, sweet dreams.